and friends, their parents, teachers, Srimati Rashila Kothari ji, who must be very proud mother today for having seen the fruits of the seed that she sowed long time ago. Shri Prakash and Manish Kothari, my dear friend Raghunathan, whose words today carried a tremendous amount of wisdom. And I must recall and tell you something about him which you may not know. He's a great locksmith. So when you find an intriguing lock on your mind, it is only he who can open it. And that ability to open the, mind, open the locks on the mind is not many people that in this country have. I was very happy when I saw the snippets from the three idiot. Not many of you might know that when this film was being conceived, we had a long chat with the producer and the director. And those of you who cared to see the credits at the end would know that most of the innovations that you saw in the film were contributed by the National Innovation Foundation. But that is not what is more important. I want to tell you something about that scooter you saw in the last scene. Most of you must be remembering that scooter. That scooter had a floor mill designed by Sheikh Jahangir from Jalgaon. And what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to want to tell you is that Sheikh Jahangir's shop on the roadside was removed in a cleanliness drive in Jalgaon. And when he went to the bank, they asked for a collateral of 15 lakhs to give him a loan. And this is the man who put India on the global map, looking at the success of this film, where what a local a literate person can do. He has another innovation, which you might see in the next film, which is a washing machine also mounted on the scooter. So those who want washing of their clothes could ask the vendor to come and wash in front of them using their own soap, water, and whatever have you. What do these people bring on the table? They bring a tremendous amount of creativity and innovation. But can they take it to the market on their own? That's where the role of students who are passing out today matters or is so crucial. I also want to recognize the young people sitting on my right with their Jyoti awardees, of whom I am told 70% are girls. Congratulations to all of you, boys and girls. I haven't heard of any institution, let me be very honest with you, I haven't heard of any institution which will offer scholarships to 500 people to bring them into a system of education which will help improve both quality of life for you, your families, and the country. So it's a great tribute to IS ISBR, and I would say that keep it up. This is a wonderful initiative that you have taken, and this is something that can only go forward because you are creating a benchmark of social responsibility, which is something that every institution should be proud of. Raghu mentioned a word which I would like to dwell upon a little bit. He mentioned that people at his age bring experience. 30 years ago, I was in a class in IMA. And after the class, a student came to me. He is now in Bangalore, incidentally, and gave me a piece of paper. And there was a quote on this piece of paper. And mind you, this student was smart. He was telling me something about myself. He said, experience is like a rear view mirror. It tells you the road traveled by. It doesn't tell you where to go. <laughs> so please understand that what I am bringing to you today is what I have seen in the rear view mirror. What you have with you is the front of the vehicle, where you will navigate your life. But please remember, the degree program is over today, but not the learning program. 2,000 years ago, there was a teacher. A student came to him and said, sir, please teach me. The teacher looked at him and said, come after some time. So he came after 
15 days. Sir, will you please teach me today? He looked at him. Come after some time. So he came after three months. Sir, please teach me. Looked at him and asked him to come again. Like that, a year and a half passed. One day he got exasperated. He said, sir, you teach everybody who comes to you. But when I come to you, you say, come again. What is my fault? What is lacking in me? He said, go and bring a glass of water. So he brought a glass of water. Kept it on the table. Now bring another glass of water. So he brought another glass of water. He said, pour the water of the second glass in the first one. The student said, but how can I do that? It will spill over. He said, that's the point. Whenever I look at you, I find you filled. Unless you empty yourself, I can't teach you. And one of the important lessons that all of us have to remember in our lives, and the students who are passing out must remember, it is the day to empty yourself. Your teachers might say, no, 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 no. Remember everything that I taught you. Sure, you should remember that. But you should also create enough space in life, in yourself, to learn and absorb from four teachers. I will tell you about four teachers. In this course in Shodhyatra, where I take selected students to Himalaya, I tell them all that there are four teachers from whom we can learn anytime, every time. Learning from within. We can learn a great deal from ourselves. That is why the importance of silence in life. You know, we must spend some time with ourselves in the morning or the night, listen to what our inner self is telling us. There can be no better teacher. There can be no surprise in life of that kind in fundamental values if we keep listening to ourselves. Teacher number one. Teacher number two, learning from each other. Peer learning. Teacher number three, learning from nature. Nature is a great teacher. You know, nature has no concept of waste. Nature is multifunctional. Nature has simultaneity. Nature has resilience. Nature has diversity. These values which are embedded in every act of nature. You know, in nature, nothing ever stops. Sometimes I've heard people in the middle career of their life, they will say, I'm stagnating. Damn it, you're not stagnating. You are decaying. In nature, there is nothing which, is, which stands still. Either you grow or you decay. Nature doesn't know anything else. So learning from nature. And the fourth is learning from common people. I'll give you an example. Long time ago, way back in 71, I was a student like you. And uh, I'd gone for a debate in Kankai. So from there, I was coming via Kolkata. On the way, I got late. I missed my train. I was young, didn't have money in my pocket to buy another ticket. There was a colleague who was looking at me that I was very nervous. He said, what's the problem? Why are you looking so worried? I said, I missed my train. I don't know what to do. I don't want to go without ticket. But I have no choice. What to do? I, I'm just lost. Kuli said, don't worry. I'll get you a ticket and put you in the train. I was very grateful to him. So I said, Kaka, he was an old man. I'm very grateful. Kindly give me your address. When I go back, I'll send the money back. He said, no, I won't give you my address. I asked again. He said, this time you ask, you're not getting your ticket. I said, all right, don't give me your address. And I touched his feet. And I said, please explain to me why you're not giving me your address. I can't understand. He said, look, I give you a ticket. And then I take the chance that you might not send the money. And I suffer in my life. All my life, I'll remember that. If I don't give you the address, you have no way to send the money. My spirit sustains. Look at that Kuli who taught me a lesson. I will never forget my life. In other words, there is no one too small in life from whom we can't learn. Please be humble. It may be a driver, it may be a lift person, it may be a gardener. Never think that you always know more than them. You don't. There are things that they know more better than us. That was the faith which led to the Honeybee Network, and you know, we got more than 150,000 ideas, innovations, and traditional practices from all over the country, 545 districts. 
because we had faith that the people, common people of our country, have tremendous richness in their knowledge. How do we, therefore, build upon this spirit of curiosity that we have in our mind, the, the ability to learn from four teachers that I mentioned, and ability to recognize that learning matters, particularly if it comes from unknown sources. I always tell my students that, how do we generate responsibility for a perfect stranger? Who is the perfect stranger? Unknown and unknowable. So students struggle for a while. I don't know how many of you can imagine now. Who is the perfect stranger? The perfect stranger could be a lizard on the wall. She's looking at the entire function. She doesn't know what we're thinking about, what we're doing, and she may have some thought which we don't know about. It could be an ant on the tree outside. And certainly those who are not born, we can't know what their preference is. To be responsible for a perfect stranger is the most exalted responsibility that a human being can ever discharge. Because there's no way they can reciprocate. They're not there. Some of the most beautiful things in our life which we have enjoyed, be it a, a dense tree on the roadside, people who planted those trees on the roadside, we don't know who they were. But we benefit from it, even today. So non-reciprocal act, now you might say in a business school, what is this professor saying, non-reciprocal act? But I believe that there's a great merit and great wisdom in non-reciprocal act. Acts where you cannot pay me back. And I, by design, by design, I perform those acts with an expectation that I'm not going to get back, or I will not let you give me back. Give it to someone else, but not to me. That's how the social network gets created. That's how Tana Bana, the warp and the weft of our society gets created. So please remember that it makes a great difference to the life if we dwell a little bit about those, those actions of ours which are non-reciprocal, which show our responsibility towards the perfect strangers, where we can be tremendously ingenious in creating public goods. I want to say a few words about how this learning that you have gained here could be very strategic. We all know that there's a growth environment in our country. The companies which absorb the maximum number of people in our country, in other words, which generate the most employment, and which are giving this spur to the growth, are not the companies where the students of the institute where I come from join. Those are the companies which run on your shoulders. The entire MSME sector runs on the shoulders of the students that you are producing. The growth of this country is harnessed by the institutions, by the economy, which you will push forward. What can we do better so that the growth can become more sustainable, more inclusive? A thought came to my mind that you are located in a place where there are a lot of industries. Couldn't it be possible that some of the courses for the next batch be run and designed 